my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. What's good, everyone? Welcome inside the Bucks Film Room podcast. My name is Brian Sampson. I'm your host. You can find me on Twitter at Bucks Film Room. I write about the Milwaukee Bucks for Forbes Sports. It was looking like today's show was going to be a great one. Bucks had just destroyed the Thunder on Sunday night. We're killing the Lakers. They're up 19 points at one point, and they it looked like they're coasting to another win, their second consecutive back-to-back win. Unfortunately, the wheels fell apart for Milwaukee in the fourth quarter against the Lakers. They blew a huge lead, ended up losing in double overtime, 128 to 124 against the Los Angeles Lakers, which hurts. The Lakers didn't have LeBron James. Bucks, they're trying to build momentum here. I was talking with Sparky on the radio after the Bucks game on Sunday night, and he had asked, you know, what do the Bucks need to do here down the stretch to get ready for the postseason? And my answer was consistency. They need to they need to build that consistency. We've seen them have these high moments where they've beaten the Nuggets, they've beaten the Thunder, they've beaten the Celtics, but we have not yet seen them be able to sustain this success over a longer period of time. And so that's really something that they need to work on that bit them in the butt here again against the Lakers on Tuesday night, which sucks, uh, especially in national television. It, it, it hurts. And Milwaukee, they, they deserve this. They didn't play as a team, especially in that fourth quarter. And so they took a 14-point lead heading into the fourth quarter. And actually, that, that grew a little bit at, at the beginning stages of that quarter. But ultimately, they only scored 13 points. And so what I did was figure it out, went back and looked at that fourth quarter as painful as it was, I went back and looked at the fourth quarter to see what happened. Why were the Lakers able to shut down the Bucs? Why wasn't Milwaukee able to generate better looks? A lot of their shots were tough. They were contested. They were fadeaways. They were setbacks. You know, a lot of very difficult shots. And they're going at the Lakers' best defenders. A lot of shots going right at Anthony Davis or going right at Austin Reeves. Those are two very good defenders that Milwaukee should be figuring out ways to attack D'Angelo Russell and some of these other guys in their lineup, but for whatever reason, they weren't. So I dove back into the film. I'm going to take you guys here through possession by possession, and we're going to talk about exactly what happened in each of those possessions to really allow the Lakers to get back into the game. We're not going to focus on the Lakers offensive possessions. We're only going to focus on the Bucks offensive possessions. Because like I said, they only scored 13 points in that fourth quarter. They were six for 21, including one for nine from the three point line and had five turnovers in that fourth quarter. Just really nasty, ugly stuff. Doc Rivers, he has a good perspective on this. He talks a lot about how, the team will learn from it and grow from it. However, there's only 10 games remaining. How how much longer can we really say they're going to learn and grow? they got to start putting this stuff into practice, into games. So let's go possession by possession. Milwaukee had 26 possessions in the fourth quarter. They only scored 13 points, which is obviously horrible if you're going points, by, points per possession. So let's just dive right in, starting with their first possession. Milwaukee got the ball to start the fourth quarter, which means that it was a design play. So it was really a very nice possession. A lot of very good ball movement ended up being a couple of swings back and forth, which you want to get that side to side uh, movement going from the right side to the left side. You want to get that ball movement, that player movement. It gets the defense moving. You know, when the ball switches sides of the court, defenses have to switch their positioning. It's a lot more movement for defenses when you're guarding a guy on the strong side, ball gets swung to the weak side, and then vice versa back and forth. So the first possession design play was one of their best possessions of the fourth quarter. They ended up with five total passes, which we're going to talk a lot about how many passes they made on these possessions. So five passes ended up in a Pat Connaughton missed three, but there are three rotations back and forth ended up with, you know, they had a dribble handoff in there. There was a ball screen with Bobby Portis and Damian Lillard that was involved and eventually a skip pass. So very nice possession overall, even though Milwaukee ended up missing the shot. 
Second possession, Damian Lillard brings the ball up the floor, gets a screen from Bobby Portis going toward the left side. Uh, Lakers end up knocking the ball out of bounds. So Milwaukee inbounds it to Bobby Portis. He goes right into a dribble handoff with Damian Lillard at the top of the key, and it ends up with a fadeaway three, which that's a fine shot except for the fadeaway part. I thought Lillard got a little too comfortable with that shot it I don't it's hard to make threes as it is he has a great knack for hitting these shots are a little bit off balance he did have his shoulders squared up and his hips squared up with the rim which was nice to see but there's just I didn't think there's a reason to put that fadeaway part in there so another missed shot to start the fourth quarter only one pass total involved in that possession the third possession Damian Lillard bringing it bringing it up on the left side of the floor again which you'll see was the theme. He really liked to do that, especially in this fourth quarter. Jay Crowder this time sets a ball screen going toward Damian Lillard's right hand. Bobby Portis then, he posts up on Jackson Hayes in the middle of the lane and hits a tough fadeaway to put the Bucks up 90-74 to with 10-36 remaining in that quarter. Again, only one pass, but it was good action. Bobby Portis started on the left block, flashed right in front of Hayes, um, right at the top of that restricted area. Nice entry pass from Damian Lillard. Bobby Portis was cooking in this game. That's a good pass or good shot that, that you're okay with him taking. Fourth possession, Damian Lillard again bringing the ball up the left side of the floor. This time he gets a double drag screen from Jay Crowder and Bobby Portis going to his right. If you're not familiar with those double drag screens, I wrote an article about it on Monday, Sunday or Monday on Forbes Sports. You should check it out. The Bucks have a lot of great options out of this double drag screen. Typically, they run it with Giannis and Lopez. So typically, Lopez sets that first screen, and then Giannis sets a second screen and slips to the rim. This time, they ran it with Jay Crowder and Bobby Portis. So the drag screen is when Damian Lillard is a little bit out in front of them. They're trailing the play, kind of coming in from behind and setting those screens. So Crowder and Portis set it going to Lillard's right toward the top of the key. Lillard tried to isolate, couldn't get anything going, hit Portis on the left wing. Portis then isolates, does his post up where he was pretty deep. It was not a post up on a block. It was post up probably 16, 20 feet from uh, the basket. Hits a, tries to hit a fadeaway, but ends up um, airballing his fadeaway turnaround jumper. Ultimately, only one pass and no swing side to side. Started Possession started on the left side of the floor, went to the middle, back to the left. ISO, one pass, missed shot. Bucks fifth possession, they got a steal, so it was a fast break. Pat Connaughton, great job leading the fast break on this one. He hit Jay Crowder with that nifty no-look bounce pass as Crowder was cutting down the right baseline. Crowder had that where he had the hand up in the air, did the fancy stuff. He looked really athletic and finished the reverse layup. It was a really nice play. Great job by the Bucks to get out and going in transition. It put Milwaukee up 92-74 with 9.54 remaining. So the Bucks actually grew their lead here. They're up by 18 points with just under 10 minutes remaining. Things are looking great. Looks like the Lakers might uh, pull their starters here. They This is the first night of a back-to-back, which is part of why LeBron James wasn't playing. So it's looking good. Looks like the Bucks are re- ready to run away with this. Sixth possession, Damian Lillard brings it up on, you guess it, the left side of the floor. He hits an an entry pass to Bobby Portis in the post on Anthony Davis. Bobby Portis throws it back to Damian Lillard behind the arc and then runs runs up to set a screen. I like the thinking, but Lillard went too early, so Bobby Portis came and ran into Reeves on the screen, was not set, and gets an offensive foul for that moving screen. So Bucks are up 92-75 at this point. For some reason, the officials went to the monitor to, re- to review this. I don't know what they thought. Bobby Portis wasn't even talking trash. I mean, he helped Reeves up off the floor. Maybe that's why. Of Like, why is he being so nice all of a sudden? Anyway, it ended up being one pass or two passes and a turnover. I did like the idea. Execution just was lacking. The next possession. Damian Lillard brings it up on the right side of the floor this time. Pat Connaughton tries to uh, set a ball screen to get D'Angelo Russell to switch on to Lillard. It doesn't work, and Austin Reeves is able to stay on Lillard. We talked about Reeves, or I talked about Reeves at the beginning here of they're going after AD, they're going after Reeves, not the best way. 
And so Pat Connaughton, he did the screen where he quickly tried to slip to the right side. I wouldn't say right wing, but kind of in between that right wing and right corner. The switch didn't work. Uh, Russell, or um, yeah, Russell stayed with Connaughton. Reeves stayed with Lillard. Uh, Lillard tried to isolate then on top of the key. Nothing gets going. He ended up trying to attack toward the right side, and it looked like an awkward looking shot where like hit the bottom of the rim or something. I guess they charged um, that as a pass and was a turnover for Lillard. So ended up being no passes on that possession and a turnover for the Bucks. Next time for Milwaukee and offense, Pat Connaughton this time is bringing the ball up on the right side of the floor. Uh, Damian Lillard receives a nice double screen off ball from Crowder and Portis. So Pat Connaughton has a ball on the right slot, right wing. Damian Lillard is on the opposite wing. Crowder and Portis set a double screen um, where Lillard is coming off toward the middle. So he comes off toward the middle. He's open, takes a dribble, and hits a nice open pull-up 16-footer, which is you know, that's a great, that was a great little set. Milwaukee loves to run that. Typically, it's only with one guy um, coming off of the weak side. This time, it was with two. Got Lillard an open look. Milwaukee's up 19 points. They're up 94-75 with about eight and a half remaining. Um, only one pass on that possession, but th that's fine. You'll live with that open look. So things are looking great again, even with eight and a half minutes left. Lead grew a little bit more, um, up 19 Lakers, again, looking like they're getting ready to pull their starters. Darvin Ham talked after the game how he shared in one of his timeouts around this point that he felt his team had another run in them, wanted to make one more push to give them one more opportunity. And, I mean, unfortunately, his gut ended up being right. And you'll see here, they're going to get on a, a really nice run. So the next time up, which is the Bucks' ninth possession of the quarter, Damian Lillard is bringing it up on the left side of the floor. He receives a screen from Jay Crowder. This time, Austin Reeves switches onto him. So they didn't have Reeves on Lillard to begin with, but he switches on to Lillard after Jay Crowder sets a screen, which is another point like, all right, Jay, if you got Reeves on you, get out of the play. Go stand in the corner. Let somebody else set a screen or let Lillard go to work or get some ball movement going. Don't just allow Austin Reeves to switch back onto Damian Lillard. So Reeves is on Lillard. Lillard tries to attack the basket, but ends up throwing the uh, pass out of bounds. It bounces off of Lakers' player hand, so Milwaukee retains possession. Lillard then inbounds the pass to Chris Middleton, who just entered the game on the right elbow, who throws it back to Damian Lillard, who's coming off a couple of screens on the three-point line. Missed shot ends up being a, another one-pass possession for Milwaukee. Next time down, Damian Lillard bringing it up on the left side of the floor once again. Entry pass to Middleton on... Austin Reeves. This time they're trying to Middleton on Reeves, which is really going to be a theme here coming down the stretch is so far it's been Lillard going after Reeves. This time it ends up being Middleton and Middleton tries to attack him a bunch and doesn't have a lot, if any success. So I saw post up for Middleton on the left block, misses a fadeaway shot going toward the baseline. One pass and done again for Milwaukee. And Middleton's going to be a primary defender. He just came in the game, not on this possession, but on the possession before for A.J. Green. He's going to be a primary of offender for the Bucs as far as really trying to play hero ball, which I thought was a big theme in this quarter. Middleton, was he didn't have it going. Damian Lillard didn't have it going. I think Giannis was just gassed in that fourth quarter, um, was struggling to play through contact anyway. A lot of hero ball from the Bucs, not a lot of teamwork. 11th possession, Damian Lillard bringing the ball up in the middle of the court this time. Gets a screen from Bobby, Bobby Portis. He tries to attack Anthony Davis by probing near the free throw line. So he, he tries to drive, nothing there. Steps back, shoots a jumper, misses that, no passes. Bucks lead is starting to get a little bit smaller now. They're down, or they're up 94 to 79 with seven minutes remaining. So after going after Reeves, Bucks thought, oh, let's go after Anthony Davis. That makes sense. Next possession, Giannis enters the game this time. They're coming out of a timeout. So the Bucks draw up a nice little set where Giannis started in the right corner received a cross screen, ends up posting up on the left block, gets a pass there from Damian Lillard. However, he tries to spin baseline, ends up stepping out of bounds as he's trying to score, which is a turnover. So one pass and a turnover. Bucks lead is now 94-82 with 6.45 remaining. 
13th possession. Bucks are attacking in transition this time. Middleton leading the way. He dumps it off to Giannis in the open court. Giannis tries to go through a ton of contact, attacking two Lakers. Nothing there for him to try to score at the rim. So at the last second, he tries to throw uh, an outlet pass to the right corner. Nobody home. Ball goes out of bounds for a turnover. turnover. So if you're keeping track at home, Giannis gets into the game, immediately has two straight turnovers, which he had a kind of a, a, a struggle in the second half with those turnovers. And we see it here again with two straight at, at the beginning or in the middle of the fourth quarter. Next possession, Bucks really start to go to their three-man game with Chris Middleton, with Giannis, and with Damian Lillard here. So Damian Lillard is bringing the ball up the court. Giannis sets a off-ball screen for Chris Middleton, who receives the pass from Damian Lillard on the right wing. So Middleton has a ball on the right wing. Giannis comes to set a ball screen um, for Middleton going toward his right. Middleton attacks toward the right baseline. Giannis rolls. Middleton throws a very nice lob over the top for Giannis, who finishes at the rim despite some contact. So Milwaukee's up 12 with 545 remaining in the game. Milwaukee went to this little three-man game with their big three a few times here down the stretch, and it's very reminiscent of the last couple of seasons under Budenholzer, actually, where they ran very similar if not the same action with just Drew Holiday playing that Damian Lillard role. So next time down, same three-man action. This time, Chris Middleton, is the uh, screen doesn't free him on the right side, so he cuts across the uh, court to the left wing and receives the pass on the left wing this time. Giannis follows him to set a ball screen going toward the middle. Chris Middleton tries to pull up three. No good. Only one pass on this possession. Bucks are now up 96 to 87. So the Lakers are starting to uh, get consecutive buckets on their end. 16th possession of the fourth quarter. Damian Lillard bringing the ball up the right side of the floor. Passes it to Giannis on the left wing. So he's at his opposite side. Giannis then goes into a dribble handoff with Chris Middleton. Middleton ultimately rejects the screen. Goes to his left side. So he goes toward the left baseline. Nice pocket pass to Giannis. Unfortunately, as Giannis is catching the pass, going to score, Reeves slides in front of him, takes a charge. Very nice play by Reeves. Play that I hate. I think it's a dangerous play. Both players went to the floor but it's a legal basketball play. Reeves definitely got in position to take the charge. So the Bucks are now up 96 to 89 with 449 remaining. So you can hear the TNT announcers getting excited for their home team coming back. Uh, the Bucks, the crowd getting a little bit anxious and the aggressiveness and intensity is really starting to pick up in the game at this point. Lakers on the other end got another bucket. Force a Bucks timeout. So coming out of their ATO, it's a pass to Giannis on the left wing, who passes it back to Damian Lillard. Um, and Damian Lillard tries to contest. He takes a contested pull up three, misses badly, misses on the other side of the rim. So the, the shot was on the left wing, hit on the other side of the backboard. I don't even know that it got rim. It's a one pass and done possession for Milwaukee. Next time up, Lillard brings it up on the left side of the floor. Passes it to Giannis, who throws it back to him. Um, so he passes it to Giannis in the middle of the key, cuts across the court, and receives a pass back. Lillard does on the right slot. He then quickly whips it to Chris Middleton, who's not necessarily in the right corner, but a little bit um, outside of the right corner. Middleton catch and shoot for three. So we see... Ball started on the left side of the floor, got swung to the right side, quick ball movement. We had three passes, a whopping three passes in the, on this possession alone, which probably matched their previous three possessions total. Three passes. Oh, and Middleton then made the catch and shoot three. Bucks are now up 101-91 with 326 remaining. Unfortunately, that is their last made basket of regulation. 326 remaining. The Bucs would not score another point in the fourth quarter. So I apologize for that spoiler alert here, but we just have bad news these last six or so possessions, which which is disappointing, right? Like we see one pass, miss shot, one pass, miss shot, one pass, miss shot. Oh, here's three passes, and we get an open look by a very good shooter, but we're not going to really come back to that type of action the rest of the game, the rest of regulation at least. Next possession, Damian Lillard brings it up on the left side, tosses it to Giannis, who sizes up Anthony Davis. 
Giannis tries to drive, drive to his left, gets about to the block, half spins back to his right, so he's going over his left shoulder, misses a hook shot, one pass, and done. 21st possession. Middleton brings it up on the left side of the court. He throws it to Damian Lillard at the top of the key. Lillard throws it back to Chris Middleton on the left wing. This time we get a little bit more action. Ball screen from Giannis um, going toward his left. So Middleton received the pass on his left wing. Giannis set the ball screen going toward Middleton's left. However, Middleton ends up trying to do an ISO post-up on Austin Reeves. Misses a fadeaway toward the middle of the court, which I thought was actually a very good look. He got into the lane. Middleton got two feet in the lane on his fadeaway. That's typically one of those vintage Middleton shots where he's able to use his size advantage. Get a good look. Even though he missed this, there was good action in this. It was a good possession. Um, the process was there. I liked it, just couldn't make the shot. Bucks are now up 101-93 with 225 remaining. Next possession, Milwaukee sets a high horns ball screen for Lillard. So Lillard is at the top of the key near the logo. He's got Brooke Lopez on his right, Giannis on his left. Um, he, uh, L L L L oh, wow. Lillard then goes off of Giannis' side, so he goes toward his left side. He ends up rising like he's going to shoot, but Anthony Davis is right there to contest it. So he drops the ball. He can't pick it up. He's kind of standing over the ball. Chris Middleton comes, grabs the ball on the left wing. He takes it all the way to the right side, ends up dribbling it toward the right, right baseline. He's got Anthony Davis on him this time. Takes it to his left a little bit, steps back, misses a pull-up, contested three. I'm not counting that as a pass. I'm not that that would that would have been their only pass coming from Lillard to Middleton. I'm not counting that as a pass. I'm counting that as zero passes, even though it might technically go down in the books. But again, ends up being an isolation on Anthony Davis, the Lakers' best defender by far, and a missed contested pull-up three. All right, 23rd possession. We're down to one, two, three, four possessions left. Lillard brings it up on the left side of the floor. Lakers send two defenders at him this time, right when he crosses half court. So he tosses it to Chris Middleton near that left corner. This time Middleton has uh, D'Angelo Russell on him, tries to isolate on him, misses a step back shot, one pass and done. This is that hero ball I was talking about. Maybe an okay shot. Could have run some more team action. Only one pass and done. Bucks are, are up 101-96 with 120 remaining. So now it's been about two minutes since their last made bucket. Lakers are slowly knocking that lead down. Next time up the floor, Damian Lillard has the ball at the top of the key. Giannis sets a screen for him. He comes off the screen, misses a pull-up three, no passes. Bucks are now only up two points with just under a minute remaining. So no passes and a pull-up three on a night that Damian Lillard had a very poor shooting night. He got some buckets here going later, but he ended up, oh, yuck, nine for 29, including three for 14 from the three-point line. All right, Bucks second to last possession. They go back to that three-man game with Chris Middleton, with Damian Lillard, and with Giannis. This time Lillard comes off a screen from Giannis going toward the left wing. He throws a skip pass to Chris Middleton, who's on the right wing. Middleton tries to attack Reeves, so he tries to attack that closeout going toward the middle of the court. Steps back, misses a jumper. Only one pass this time. One out, now it's a tie game with 30 seconds remaining, and the Lakers have the ball back. So again, Middleton trying to play that hero ball. There's only a one-pass possession, and they couldn't get anything going. All right, last possession. Bucks had a timeout. There was about 16, 17 seconds remaining when they called their timeout. Lakers had a foul to give, but the Bucks didn't attack, which this is, I think this was a missed opportunity from Milwaukee. They had to have known the Lakers were going to foul, and yet they didn't attack until late in the clock, which then the Lakers uh, fouled Giannis, who was trying to attack the basket. So went from an ATO with 16 seconds left to now only two and a half seconds remaining, which was kind of a, a big hoopla about the travel, potential travel with Giannis. I went back and looked, and it looked worse in real life. Maybe you could have called it. Depends on when you say he got his first foot down. I thought it looked, it was fine, though. Regardless, foul on the Lakers. Bucks call another timeout. Great play. Chris Middleton inbounds the ball. Giannis gets an alley-oop at the rim, just misses it, um, misses the shot, which ton of contact with Anthony Davis. 
Anthony Davis was grabbing and holding Giannis before the pass was even made while the pass was in the air. Um, well, Giannis, when Giannis rose to catch the pass, Anthony Davis still had his forearm elbow in Giannis's midsection, forcing him away from the hoop. Ton of contact. I, I would have loved to see that, that foul called. Um, there was a lot of, a lot of attention drawn on Twitter last couple of days about how many free throws the Lakers have had in the last two years in that free throw differential. And tonight they shot 15 more free throws than the Bucks. The Lakers were 30 for 32 from the free throw line. The Bucks were 11 for 17. I don't think the Bucks lost because of the officiating. We just went through all, this is their last offensive possession of the regulation or of the fourth quarter. We just went through all of their possessions. You can see that they shot themselves in the foot. They did not do themselves any favor. And this was a call that you would have loved to see, especially with some of the calls the Lakers got. But what can you do? You, you only can play through it. You can only control what's in your control. And Milwaukee didn't do that. They played a lot of hero ball. They played a lot of selfish basketball in this fourth quarter. Um, I went back and totaled in case you weren't taking notes at home. So they had 26 possessions in this fourth quarter and 18 of those 26 possessions ended with one or zero passes. 18 of those 26 possessions for the bucks in the fourth quarter ended with one or zero passes. I got to say it one more time in the bucks fourth quarter against the Lakers 18 of their 26 possessions ended with one or fewer passes before they took a shot or turned the ball over. That's ridiculous. Milwaukee needs to get back to running some of that action. You can do that three-man game, but you need to get the ball moving. You can't just screen, pull up, screen, pull up, iso. They need to find a better way to attack defenders. And I think that starts with their leadership on the court, but also with Doc Rivers. A lot, a big thing under Adrian Griffin was – that they weren't organized on offense. I, I kind of felt that way at parts in the fourth quarter. Granted, they did have some great ATOs, um, some great plays after timeouts. They did go to that three-man game. But overall, I thought that they, they could have been better. Hopefully, it'll be a learning moment. Bucks have the New Orleans Pelicans on Thursday night and then back at it Saturday against the Hawks. They need to continue or get back on the right track, just pulling up the – standings here so they still own a two-game lead over the Cleveland Cavaliers for that race for second the New York Knicks um, are right behind the Cavs and then Orlando's right behind the Knicks so it's a pretty tight race here 10 games remaining for Milwaukee they need to get right back on track no need to feel sorry for themselves just learn from this and grow from this well, thank you, everyone. I appreciate you tuning in. You can find me on Twitter, at Bucks Film Room. Like, subscribe, whatever you want to do for this podcast or YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you next time.